everybody. My name is Gail and I'm coming to you from Laconia Public Library and we're going to do fairy houses today. Hi, I'm Jamie. We're going to each make a fairy house today and we're going to tell you a little bit about fairy lore and what you can do with the kit that you got from the library. If you didn't get a kit from the library, we still have four left and you can certainly make it after our show here. So we're going to talk about some of the things we have and let's get started. Here we go. You want to look at some books first? Sure. All right. First one is Fairy Houses and Beyond. This is a lovely book and it has all kinds of things. There are two basic differences in the types of fairy houses you can build. You can build a fairy house out of completely natural stuff. Just going outside, finding a cool place, and picking up things from nature. Don't pull it off the trees and things. Just find stuff on the ground. And fairies will like that very much. Some people like to use human things or take some natural things and change them. Like that gourd in the picture. It's beautiful. And either way is fine. I'm sure fairies will like whatever you present them with. That's lovely. Yeah, show them. That one's made of a lot of rocks. This is a bedroom for sleeping. Because fairies need to sleep too. Yes, they flitter around and then they're so tired. <laughs> okay. The next book is called Fairy Gardens. These are available at the library so you can take them out. This fairy garden book has a lot more houses that are a lot more human built. You can tell they're human built because they look like you could live in them. It's really kind of cool, but they still use a lot of natural things and a lot of natural scenes. They're beautiful. Some of these fairy gardens look like you could actually grow your own vegetables and fruits in them. Fairies particularly like red fruits and red flowers. So this one is called Fairy Houses Unbelievable! And these fairy houses I think were done by professionals. They're probably architects that live near fairies and take their orders because these fairy houses look like they take hours and hours and hours to build but you know what? They're pretty spectacular when you're done. You could make this as a whole family making these fairy houses because they are really amazing. But they're using natural things, which is really a good thing to do. Let's do this one next. This fairy, house, fairy book is called Fairy World. There's even a fairy on the front. I don't know how they got a picture of that fairy, but they must have had a big lens. So in this book, there's all type of things. There are, there are all types of things about fairies. Fairies and gnomes and things like that. And you can see up close some of the drawings that some people who have found them have made. It tells all about the things that they love, the colors that they like, and oh my goodness Ooh, different kinds of fairies like water fairies not all fairies look the same everybody kind of thinks fairies are girls and they just flutter around but there are male fairies as well and these are some of the plants that they just love to have near them fairies like to decorate a lot we can decorate for them but they also like to do their own decorating it's pretty exciting and typical fairies don't go shopping at Walmart or Kohl's for their clothes. They make their own. And their fairy clothes are made. This is fair, fairyality? Fairyality. Fairyality. That beautiful dress. Now, you can make fairy clothes too. I don't know how well you'll wear them. These are some of the things that fairies use when they're decorating their clothing. Those are found bird feathers lots of beautiful feathers and they make their own clothing so that it fits their bodies oh i love that one that shows half of a sketch of the fairy and half of the clothing that the fairy's wearing it's really cool they use things like leaves and flowers there's a whole design set look at all those clothes 
Sometimes it's fun just to gather things and make fairy clothes. You can leave them near or in your fairy house so that perhaps the fairy might want a new wardrobe. I love that. Ooh. Those are beautiful. So you can take any of these books out of the library and read them and get ideas. Fun to do. We also have fairy stories. We have a lot of fairy stories. And right now you can still call the library and ask us to put them outside for you, but next Tuesday the library is going to be open. So you can actually come here and check out books. We're so excited to see you. Can't even tell you how excited we are to see everybody. <laughs> so let's get started with building our fairy houses. We've assembled a whole bunch of different things. And we sent you home with some things. Some of you who are watching from home came to pick up fairy house kits. So we gave you a pot. And or we gave a jar. Or a jar. Or we gave, and we gave you a baggie full of bright jewels and craft sticks. In shells. Case you use them. There's shells. some shells, some, yep, some stones, some beads, all kinds of things. So you can use those if you want to make a nice bright glimmery fairy house or if you want more of a natural kind of fairy house you can just use things you find in your yard so and both of us have brought some stuff with us we we went out yard picking and or yard gathering better and we're gonna make some fairy houses my fairy house is gonna be made out of a jar this one's smaller than the ones we gave out but it's it's fine because fairies aren't really large it's not like they're gonna be this big and they're gonna stick their toe in and go what was she thinking <laughs> so I'm gonna start and I'm making mine on a base just so because I'm not making it outside where I could just put it in the ground or near a tree or something so I'm gonna make mine on a base so I can take it outside and put it in a good spot and I'm just gonna get started Jamie may I borrow some of the potting soil please we're gonna get a little messy here. Not much left in there, I so. don't eat a lot. All right. Okay. And I so. didn't bring a spoon, so. I don't need <laughs> a spoon. Using I, hands. <laughs> I have hands. We don't mind getting messy here at the library. So I'm gonna put some dirt down on either side of my fairy house. And maybe a little crumble in the front. Thank you. Okay, and I picked all kinds of things up from the ground. And I don't know a single name of a leaf or anything, but I'll show you everything I'm doing. And because I didn't plan my fairy house, fairies don't plan a lot. And I'm so, sort of a fairy. I'm just a big fairy. So I brought all kinds of things I found outside and really, really fell in love with. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of my bucket. Do you notice anything about these colors and Gail's shirt? Do you notice that she picked flowers that match her shirt, which I really like? You can tell what colors she really loves. They're my favorites. So I'm still taking out all these things just to get to what's at the bottom. And what's at the bottom of my bucket are some beautiful granite stones that I found outside. And because I like things to be nice and neat in my fairy house because my life isn't nice and neat so I really want my fairy yard to be nice and neat so I'm going to put sort of a wall around my fairy house I'm going to decorate it a little bit but I'm going to put all the stones down for my boundary so that the fairy knows this is their yard working on it now uh, while she's doing that I think I'm going to fill my fairy house up with some soil because I'm going to do mine standing upright to make kind of like a, a house from above. And any way you do it is okay. No wrong way to make these. Do you have enough dirt? Oh, I have plenty. If you need some more, there's plenty more here. No, I don't think I'll need any more. So I got these kinds of reeds. They're, well, I guess they're kind of a grass. Kind of wheat. Yeah, like, like a, a wheat, wheat a wheat or a grass of some kind and they're really long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both the tops and the bottoms in different ways I just cut it off 
And I'm going to put some of it, maybe I have to cut it twice even. I'm going to put some right inside my fairy house. Kind of like a straw floor. If you ever had a, a natural floor in your house. And then I'm going to put the rest of them on the top of this so that it looks consistent. That means that it looks kind of the same. Grasses are good for fairies. And if you're outside, you would already have a natural ground, but because we're doing this inside, we don't have natural grass or anything, so we're kind of making our own here. I brought a lot of grass, so I'm gonna <laughs> shake it in it's there. It's raining grass. It's raining grass on my, <laughs> oh, there's my grass. I knew I, I knew I found a lot of it. So I'm gonna put it around my fairy house. It's just all over the table right now. Okay, and I got a couple of sticks. I'm gonna crisscross it. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna glue a little bit of glue to keep them together once I let go. So I'm just gluing the two pieces together and they're gonna lean on my fairy house a little bit. That's gonna be a foundation. And I think I'm gonna give them sh a shaded roof. So on my fairy house, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue, and this is just like Elmer's glue. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the top. If you're using other heavier materials and you have a glue, a glue gun, sometimes that works well. So I found these really large leaves. They're pretty cool. And I think they make a great roof for my fairy house. I may have to do a couple of layers of them, and I may even have to trim them. But this is all okay, because fairies won't mind. So, go, on's going my, on's going, oh, that's interesting. On is going the, the second part of my roof here. Remember, you can trim anything you want. So, mine's going down like this. And my sticks are going to be there for the front. It may not stay down. I may have to do some more, but it just has to be shade. And because I know that fairies absolutely love beautiful things, I found these gorgeous flowers. See? They're really nice. Yeah, they smell nice too. And I think I'm just going to snip off a few bouquets to give to the fairies because they love beautiful things. Put one on this side. But I think I'm going to, I wish, I wish I had some clay or something, or just to put it in the ground, because I would make this the tree Ooh. next door. Maybe if I have enough stones, I can do that. Hang on a minute. I'm going to try to put it together with stones. Don't know if it's going to stay up. A little pile of I'm not sure yet. There's some left if we need it. Okay. Yes, may I have a little bit, please? I can find. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It'll lean. <laughs> it's gonna lean a little bit. I'm gonna do more rocks, and we'll be all set here. Look at that. That's pretty beautiful. beautiful. That's pretty beautiful. And I had a couple more flowers that I really like. And I don't remember what these are called. My mother had them in her yard. Um, but these always remind me about the timber. These always remind me of fairies. And I always think that fairies like to see themselves. So these, these flowers on this plant, um, Look like little fairy bells, like if, you, if they were wearing that fairy dress. That would be a beautiful fairy dress. So I'm going to put a few of those on. Some are closed and some are open. But either way, I think the fairies will like them a lot. And because I know fairies like decorates, I'll put just a couple decorates there. I have a beautiful shimmering, I think it's bluish green stone. You may have gotten some of these in your package. I'm putting one 
right at the end like a doormat. And I also have a little tiny shell. And I'm going to put that right in front of it. So here I go. I'm going to try to pick it up and show it to you. Because that's really all I want on my fairy house. Here we go. Let's see if my tree falls over. I'm coming to you. There's my beautiful fairy house. Didn't take a long time. Didn't cost very much money at all, just the price of the jar. And some potting soil. And it's beautiful. I think the fairies will move right in. Maybe I'll put out some cherries or some berries near my fairy house so they can have something delicious to eat. Jamie, it's your turn to make your fairy house. Right, so I'm doing mine a little bit differently than Gail did hers. She has hers laying down, but I'm having mine standing up so that I can put a little bit of a plant in there. I, can you see this? Okay. Um, I have a lot of plants in my house. I love living things in my house. So I wanted More to give my, yeah, I have about 140 plants in my house. <laughs> it's a lot of things to take care of. So I just snipped this little, this little plant off of one of my big mama plants. This is just a little, it's called a succulent. So it doesn't need a lot of water. It just needs to be in dry soil. So I thought it'd be easy for my fairies to take care of because they don't want to have to do a lot of work. They want to fly around and do their fun things. They're not very responsible. <laughs> They're busy making clothes and doing all kinds of, you know, fun fairy stuff, not building houses. So I'm just going to put that in my, my potting soil that I already put in my pot. And then I'm just going to kind of decorate around it. I pulled a big leaf from my house. So I am going to, well, is that an oak leaf? It is an oak leaf. I have a big oak tree in my yard. I have a big oak tree that drops many, 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 many acorns in my yard every fall. Squirrels must love that. Squirrels do love it. We have squirrels all and chipmunks all over our yard. So I'm going to make just a little backdrop there. And then I am just going to do kind of a simple little, little stone decoration around. You have some of these these beautiful stones. They're like flat marbles. I'm just putting them inside my pot. And then, yeah, we gave you, we gave you, I think. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure We're back. if that video paused, but if it did, I'm really sorry. Um, and then I brought some rocks from my own house. Some, just like Gail, we live in New Hampshire, so we have lots of granite in our yards. So. And it's beautiful. Granite it's is beautiful. beautiful. It's sparkly and it's strong. It has little flecks all through it. Granite has, uh, is it ruby in it? I think it's ruby. Garnet. 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 There's garnet. Garnet. garnet in some stones in the area. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's in granite. So I am just going to put that all around inside too. To make this is beautiful. House. Then, because I don't want, I want my fairy to have some privacy, so I'm just going to make a little fence around the yard. That's so cool. They might even climb on your fence. <laughs> I would, because climbing is fun. Oh, thank you. Sure. Another thing that we saw online that you can do with these um, popsicle sticks that we put in your bags is you can make a door for your fairy house. So you can glue together maybe, maybe five, oops, there go all my craft sticks. Um, you can glue together maybe five or five or so of these in a straight, in a line like that. And then you'd wanna put a stick behind them to hold it together. It's easier when you're doing it flat on the table. <laughs> you probably want the some glue. But then, you, oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? You can glue it right to the front of your, um, your pot, or if you have a tree in your yard, you could just prop it up against the tree and it makes, makes a really cool door and the pictures we saw online, which we didn't do today because- They take a long time. We didn't wanna get hot glue and all that stuff. But if you have some hot glue at, at your house, you can glue, the, glue this door together and you can put decorations all over the door, moss and, and jewels and- A shell um, doorknob. Yeah, shells, oh, it'd be beautiful. Yeah, we have little beads too, and I know you have some too, but you could put some of these little tiny beads for the doorknob or for a doorbell. I think I am gonna use some of these tiny beads and I think I'm just gonna sprinkle them 
just to make some nice bright inviting colors from for the fairies to come in and that's it I think I'm gonna be all done now and show you my little fairy house that um, plant almost looks like a little seat <laughs> it looks like a little a well, little chair have, to sit on doesn't have prickles so they could no nope, it's not prickly at all so that's my fairy house that's Gail's fairy house you can see they're very different but I think fairies would like to visit both of them yeah and remember that you can come and get these books to get ideas you can also look online if you want to because there's tons of ideas online for how to make different fairy houses some are very elaborate some are very simple but all of them are things that fairies would like they're not very critical so we hope you enjoy making your fairy houses with your family and as I said, we, we have four more kits. If a couple more people want to do it, we can do that. Um, if not, use what you have at home. You can use whatever you have at home to create your own special place to invite the fairies. We hope you have a good time. Do. And we, before we go, we should make sure to tell you about our summer reading program in case you haven't already heard about it. First, if you want to sign up for summer reading, super, super simple. You can go online and do it, and I'll tell you how, but you can call us and we'll sign you up when you come into the library next week on Tuesday when we open. You can sign up in person, but if you want to sign up before that, you can go to our website, which is laconialibrary.org, and um, on the right-hand side, there's a little section that says children and teens. So click on children and teens, and then children's, and that will bring you to the Laconia Public Library children's page where you can um, fill out a quick form with um, just child's age, name, age, and some information. Very, very brief information, and you're all signed up. We will have reading logs. We do have reading logs. If you want to call, we can put them outside for now. Um, and then next week, we can just give them to you in person. But we have a flyer with all of our summer reading information, and we have reading logs that you can fill out. And, and we have a lot of book prizes this year because we couldn't really do the treasure chest because we can't have 50 people pawing through it. But we have book prizes if you bring your reading log in or if you call us and tell us that you've read for the week. Once a week, you can come and pick up a book. We'll put it out for you. All we need to know is how old you are so that we can give you a book that you will like, not a board book if you're 12 years old. So we've got all kinds of stuff. We're going to have some virtual shows. Um, we have Hear Me Read. We're going to have. We're still going to have story time online on Thursdays. We have tons of stuff that we're going to do, but mostly we can't wait to see you. And we're doing these craft programs every Tuesday afternoon, and we're going to be putting out. Even when we're open, we'll, we can still put out the. Um, supplies that you might need for these craft programs. So our next craft is magic wands. So and tomorrow will we start putting out um, supplies tomorrow or probably Thursday? Probably Thursday. Okay. Thursday we'll put them out. And then just so you know, some of the later crafts, um, especially the last craft, is um, painted magical creatures. And there will be a limit on how many people can do that because it turned out to be a little different than we thought it was going to be. So it's hard to find these things. It really is. <laughs> it's hard to find magical creatures. Can you yeah. imagine? They're hard to track down. And paint. You know, they don't want to hold still for them. <laughs> but anyway, so most of these are we have plenty of supplies for. But please call ahead and tell us if you want to do these crafts. And we're really looking forward to seeing you in person. And you can send us pictures also. Please send us oh, pictures yes. of your fairy houses so that we can post them online to show what everybody can do. Because we've been alone for so long. We miss you guys so much. We do. Um, probably the easiest place to send pictures is um, our general email address. Um, the library's general email address. You can send them to info, I-N-F-O, at laconialibrary.org and they'll get to us. We will see them for sure. Um, Only if, if it's okay for us to post your pictures. Yeah, if you want us to post them, if you're okay with that, let us know. And you can also send them on Facebook. We have a Facebook. Obviously, you're watching Facebook Live right now, so you know we have a Facebook account. You can send them in a message on Facebook too. We'll get them either way. So that's most of what we have to tell, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for 
making fairy houses with us. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.